The blade of evil's bane, the master sword, the sword that seals darkness, the master sword of resurrection, the legendary sword, the sword of legend, the master sword. This legendary blade has appeared in many games across the franchise and has become a staple in the Legend of Zelda series. What makes the master sword the master sword? Why does the Master Sword require blessings and upgrades? Why does the Master Sword appear so ravaged in Tears of the Kingdom? I am Moxie, and this is Heavy Speculation. The following theories will definitely be more crackpot. As per the title of the series, sometimes there won't be a ton of evidence. However, I feel like the Zelda community needs more fun, speculative theories to add to the conversations around these games. This series is just getting started. If you're interested in this kind of content, consider subscribing. It's free and it helps a ton. Let's get started. The Goddess Sword was crafted by Hylia to, quote, help protect the people of the world from evil. In Skyward Sword, Link is guided to the Goddess Sword by Fi, Fi? To activate the Gate of Time in the Sealed Grounds, Link must seek the Three Sacred Flames. Deep in the Ancient Cistern is Favor's Flame. It lengthens and sharpens the blade, making it the Goddess Longsword, doing twice as much damage. Within the sandship lies Nehru's flame, which was protected by Skipper and his crew in ancient times, until the pirates stole the ship. It enhances dowsing abilities, changing from the goddess Longsword into the goddess White Sword. Din's flame rests within the fire sanctuary. Bathing the goddess White Sword in it fills the blade with sacred light, giving it three times the original strength. This tempering transforms the sword into the Master Sword. Finally, Zelda, the reincarnation of Goddess Hylia, blesses the Master Sword. This transforms the Master Sword into the true Master Sword. As it stores power, the wings spread. After all the events of the game, it is set on a divine pedestal to be passed down to future heroes. In Four Swords, Linking the game in A Link to the Past upgrades the Four Sword to mimic the power of the Master Sword. In Ocarina of Time, Link is tasked by Zelda to help stop Ganondorf's plan. After obtaining the three spiritual stones, the Ocarina of Time, and the Song of Time, the Door of Time opens to reveal the Master Sword. The sword holds Link in time for seven years, until he is worthy of wielding the blade. Placing it back in the pedestal sends Link back to present-day Castletown. A Link to the Past requires Link going deep within the Lost Woods with all three light pendants. It allows Link to break the seal atop Hyrule Castle and battle Aghanim. It has to be tempered to make its edge sharper and fills the sword with light. It's odd that the encyclopedia notes the Master Sword appearing in the Oracle series. Just like Four Swords, linking the two games together gives the Noble Sword powers akin to the Master Sword. But just like Four Swords, this is not the same legendary blade. The same legendary blade from A Link to the Past is found again in the Lost Woods in A Link Between Worlds. Though, this time, Link must collect Dependent's Virtue. It is the only thing with the power to break the barrier around Hyrule Castle. Once again, the Master Sword can be upgraded using the Master Ore found in Low Roll. In Twilight Princess, Link is cursed by Zant, and Zelda is not able to help him. She prompts Link to go find the legendary blade. Once again, going deep in the Lost Woods leads to the Old Temple of Time, housing the Master Sword. It becomes a key to unlocking the past, and using it in the past unlocks the Temple of Time dungeon. I already made a theory about my thoughts on the Temple of Time, linked in the description below. In the Twilight Realm, the sword fuses with the power of souls. 
The upgrade enhances the sword, enabling Link to beat most enemies with a single blow, and also giving him the ability to cut through the dark fog. Link is able to defeat Ganondorf with an ending blow. During the credits, it is returned to the pedestal. The Tower of the Gods must be completed before getting access to Hyrule Castle in Wind Waker. Deep beneath the waves is Hyrule, frozen in a time capsule. Drawing the blade releases Ganondorf's army, and allows Ganondorf to use full magic again. The Master Sword is dulled and the power to repel evil has faded. Laruto and Fado, the sages of earth and wind, were murdered by Ganondorf. Link must awaken the new sages to have a chance at defeating him. Medley and Makar pray to the goddesses for the Master Sword and Link, restoring the edge keeping it glowing with the power to repel evil. Link uses the Master Sword to deliver the final blow, turning Ganondorf into stone. This brings us to Breath of the Wild, which does not have a confirmed placement on the timeline. Unlocking the memories reveals some interesting information. In the third memory, Zelda asks, How proficient are you right now wielding that sword on your back? Legend says that an ancient voice resonates inside it. Can you hear it yet, hero? In the 17th memory, Zelda awakens her sealing power, or force, to save Link from the Guardian Stalker. Yo, I got I got another theory about, about Force if you like magic and stuff. After she saves him, this happens. Let's compare that to the sound it made in Skyward Sword. It almost seems like a whimper or a plea. The sound is weak compared to Skyward Sword. Since Zelda just used her sealing powers or forces, it may have given the sword a slight buff of energy. The sword? So he can... He can still be saved? Fai is able to communicate with Zelda, even if brief. The sword is returned to the pedestal. Link must once again go deep in the Lost Woods to find the pedestal. Attempting to draw the blade with less than 13 hearts will result in Link's death. After the trial of the sword, Link draws the blade. He is transported back to the Lost Woods. It glows brightly. Then, he closes his eyes as if listening for a phi. This time, it sounds like less of a plea and more like relief. The final game with the Master Sword is Tears of the Kingdom. Link is carrying it on his back in the first trailer. In the second trailer, the Master Sword is nowhere to be seen. When the delay was announced, a single camera shot sent the Zelda community into a theory and speculation-fueled frenzy. Now that we have covered the complete history of the Master Sword, where is there any indication of foreshadowing? Let's go all the way back. Oh, too far. Keep going. Okay. Demise curses Link. Okay. Now, watch the smoke very closely. Where does the smoke go? Skyward Sword was a very important game to establish much of the lore in the whole Legend of Zelda series. This simple detail would slip by most people. Like, how is this even a theory? It's subtle especially in the afterglow of battle, 
It is one of the most important visual plot points in the series. Though, Fi Fi said he was eradicated. The sword has never been the same sword again. According to page 83 of the encyclopedia, despite its long life, the Blade of Evil's bane is not eternal. To maintain it requires sacred power from spirits, great fairies, and sages. Over the years, worthy smiths temper the Master Sword with unique materials, changing its color and shape ever so slightly. The pattern of the Master Sword losing its power to repel evil or in need of upgrades happens so many times. Heck, in Ocarina of Time, the Big Goron Sword is more powerful than the THE Legendary Blade. A Link to the Past and A Link Between Worlds both have Master Sword upgrades. Fusing the Master Sword with soul energy is required to finish the Palace of Twilight. The Master Sword requires a blessing from the Sage of Earth and the Sage of Wind in the Wind Waker. In Breath of the Wild, it loses energy constantly. Even after beating the trial of the fucking sword? The true Master Sword possesses the Light Force that is the source of all life in this world. When held aloft, it gathers heavenly energy and becomes able to fire a beam known as the Skyward Strike. According to page 83 of the encyclopedia, there has only been one appearance of the true Master Sword in the series, Skyward Sword. Beyond this game is only the Master Sword. These blessings have been to continue to hold the seal on Demise's consciousness in Breath of the Wild. Maybe Fi is crying out for help because she simply cannot hold him any longer. That brings us to the Tears of the Kingdom trailer. The first thing that came to mind was the cutscene after defeating Demise. Fi says, quote, His residual consciousness has been absorbed into the Master Sword and is now sealed away. Maybe she thought he was eradicated. Maybe Demise is still alive and well. Demise's consciousness lives inside the Master Sword. This explains the need for upgrades and blessings throughout the series. The hero must be pure of heart to draw the Master Sword. So, when Link is ambushed by Ganondorf, maybe he is able to touch it. This is the reason the Master Sword appears in Tears of the Kingdom in this way. It is never stated what would happen if someone who was not pure of heart touched it. It's always been locked behind doors or hidden somewhere in the woods. Kept safe. So if he touches it... It's tough to distinguish if it could even be repaired in this state. Demise's residual consciousness is the only logical explanation for the true Master Sword being extinguished to a mere, weak form of the Master Sword, which requires various blessings and upgrades. These do not even begin to crush the power of the true Master Sword. So, what can be done? According to the Zelda Wiki under the trivia section, Quote, at the end of Skyward Sword, because of the time travel involved, the Goddess Sword and the Master Sword exist simultaneously. The Master Sword is within the sealed temple, while the Goddess Sword is up in Skyloft. If this were true, then my original theory about the Sacred Flames being in Hyrule could be the answer. I mean, Sky Islands are coming back. If the Sacred Flames and the Goddess Sword still exist, then the true Master Sword can be forged once again. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the theory, please help support the channel by liking, subscribing, and leaving your thoughts in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.